If you can't get a walleye to eat a creek chub or red tail in the fall on a plain old fashioned Lindy rig, you're not gonna get them to be able to eat anything else. There's just nothing that can compete with a live three to five, six inch chub down there swimming around doing its own thing. When walleyes are hungry, water temps have finally dipped into the upper 50s and fish are eating. So what if they don't eat it? Then <laughs> what do you do? You go home? No, there's a couple of little tweaks that you can do still using the same get up. that will help you get more bites. And today it definitely saved my morning. And uh, I was grabbing tons of fish, seeing them on the electronics. At one point on live scope, I dropped the chub down and had like five walleyes there and they would not touch it. It's like, what gives? I finally tail hooked my minnow instead of running it in the nose. And I don't think I barely closed my bail and fell dunk and started pulling line. And it was, I think that one was a fat 24, 23 inch walleye. And it was game on from there. How's that start off the day? Gnarly little fin action. Love it. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Now there's a time and a place for everything, right? You can't always tail hook your minnows. You don't always want to. And here's kind of when and why and where that I would recommend it. So if you're going out and you're trolling along a break line and have scattered fish or trying to find fish, you don't want to tail hook that minnow. Because when you're dragging it backwards, it's basically doing you no good. You're getting no action out of that minnow. It's gonna die faster. Even if you're going really slow, like 0 0.3, 0 0.4, it's gonna die faster because you got that water pushing into its gills backwards and it's just, it's not really breathing, I guess is what you'd call it. So that's when I will nose hook that minnow. Usually I'm running at say 0.3 up to 0.7-ish and just kind of going down along that contour, whatever that specific line is that those fish are in that day, whether it's 18 to 22 on the edge of the tapering weeds or 25 to 35 and they're out in that deep kind of typical late fall stuff. Now once I've found fish and I know I'm on fish and I'm confident I'm dropping right down in them or I've got a school instead of spread out say it's a pod I like to call a pod of walleyes if there's like you know four five six eight whatever not a giant school nothing crazy but like a nice pod or wolf back or whatever fish. That's when I'll drop down a tail hook minnow and let it just work itself. And I'll usually just spot lock. I won't even move the boat. I'll let it sit there. And what happens is you run like a four to seven foot leader and you can see that minnow literally swimming with the hook in its tail trying to get away. And it's two feet, three feet off bottom and it's just got so much action and it's really erratic. and. There's days where that's what walleyes want. There's days where they don't want to chase and you don't want a tail hook. And if they're super neutral and they don't want to try to chase down that minnow, well then you have to shorten up your leader and keep that minnow tighter to bottom. Don't let them get away as far. It's kind of like ice fishing. You know, there's days where you just can't play keep away because they won't chase you up. You find where that ceiling is for trying to raise fish. And uh, same thing for open water. Some days they only want to move so far or so high to eat, but this morning tail hooking was the deal. So let me break down my setup a little bit right now. Uh, basically all of my fall creek chubbing, I'm, I don't know, 95% of the time, probably almost all the time I'm using a number two BMC tech set live bait hook. The number two is just a great all around size for those smaller three, four inch minnows. You can even use it on some of the bigger ones, once you get to five inches or so, you might want to bump up. If you're running those real big fall chubs, six inch or better, then you got to go up to as high as say a one eye. But a number two is just a great all around size that works with most anything. And when I'm tail hooking them, what's kind of cool too is you get more fish hooked kind of in the mouth versus down deep. And you got to picture fish typically are going to hit that minnow head first. So you've got the tail on the outside of the mouth versus when you're nose hooking a minnow and they eat it head first, well, there's way better odds of you snagging and tearing something that's gonna hurt the fish, right? So I just found that tail hooking too, it seems like the majority of the time, unless you're letting them eat for like two minutes, which I don't, some guys do, they're gonna be hooked around kind of that outside edge of the mouth. As far as my line goes, 
I've converted completely over to mono for fall chubbing. Just lose way less fish. I would, used to be super worried about not feeling as many bites and not knowing if it's my minnow getting excited and pulling or if it's a fish. But with mono, you land more fish. I really enjoy the reeling hook set. I'll talk more about that later. And you can actually kind of play keep away with them. With braid, with the no stretch, it's, there's times you kind of pull up to check a bite and when they pull back, you feel them drop it or spit it. With mono, you can almost entice a fish into biting better or finishing doing that second chomp where you feel the bunk and the rod's kind of loaded up and sometimes they'll take off running and you just gotta open your bale and let line flow out. Uh, sometimes they'll hit it and then they'll just sit there. They go belly to the bottom and they just sit there. And sometimes with mono, you can just give them a little pull you like past the point of just checking but you're almost pulling that bait and it's like the minnow is trying to get out of their mouth or something you can feel them do another chomp and that's when you set the hook when you feel when you pull and you feel a whole another chomp they're adjusting that minnow they're taking it down a little bit deeper and that's when it's time to set the hook when i'm using monofilament it's kind of like a slip bobber where you don't set the hook on that fish you basically just crank down fast and once your rod is loaded up and you actually have the weight of that fish that's when you can set the hook and lean into them but the the reason for that too and I, even if you're using braid i'd still recommend it for a couple of reasons so think about the slip bobber deal your line is at an angle like this here's your bobber on top of the water when you're setting the hook you're just kind of swinging and moving that bobber not exactly setting the hook. You're just kind of swinging that bobber down and you're just not getting a good hook set. So doing that reeling hook set tightens up the whole connection. And then when you lean into them, you've got a direct connection. Same thing goes for a Lindy rig. Sometimes when those fish hit and you feel them pull line real quick, it's unbelievable how fast they can be 30 or 50 feet off to the side. And you might reel up and think you're there, think you're tight, but you're just on your three quarter ounce weight. And when you go to set the hook, you'll be like, oh, I missed them and start reeling. And like 10 seconds later, it's like, oh wait, you're still there. It's just a mess and you miss a lot of fish doing it. So just reel up, kind of a steady re reel. And as your, your rod starts to load up, I just pick up the pace faster and faster. And then I hit them and you're gonna land way more of those fish. So I mentioned a big three quarter ounce weight. And like a number two hook, I'd say a three quarter ounce is kind of my all around because typically you're fishing deeper and typically in the fall, it's blowing 20, 30 mile per hour gusts every day. So having a three quarter ounce just covers you. It knows that you, your bait is straight down, you're tight to bottom, you're fishing within those bottom couple feet. I'll bump up a little bit lighter, three A sounds if I'm fishing shallower or if it's glass calm. And if you're running a creek chub, red tail chub, whatever, on some of those shallow fish, like that 10 to 15 foot kind of edge before the drop off, that's when I use a, like a quarter ounce light. And instead of being straight under the boat or a 45 degree angle, I'm throwing it way out back, basically like I'm running shallow crankbaits. And then I'm going along at 0.8 or whatever and fishing that off bottom along that edge all the way from the boat. But for the typical traditional fall chubbing, three quarters is great all around. Now you can use just a cheap old fashioned egg sinker. They're pretty dense, they're super cheap, they work well. I actually like busting out my bass tackle. I grab a three quarter ounce tungsten flipping weight and I'm not worried about losing it. You know, you bass fish in the summer and it's like you set the hook and there goes $5 or $10 or whatever, depending on the size weight you're using. But when you're using a Lindy rig with a four to six foot, sometimes a seven foot leader, fish aren't gonna bite the weight. You know, they're all down here, so you don't have to worry about losing it ever. I just check it occasionally throughout the day if I'm dragging through areas with zebra mussels and retie with mono, because mono isn't super abrasion resistant, but the reason for the tungsten is just, it's way compact, it's super dense, it's the most sensitive metal, I guess, if that's what you wanna call it. And I feel like I just have a better feeling of what's going on down there with that. And with that bullet head, it cuts water well and it's smaller and it just, I feel like I'm more efficient and have a better feel of everything that's happening and going on. A really, really crucial thing to pay attention to when you tail hook minnows, because it happens almost every time, you have to clean the scales off the tip of your hook or you're going to miss fish and wonder what the heck you're doing wrong. 
There's just something about when you put that hook through and kind of that meaty, it's almost like the back of the belly fat where it meets into the tail. You always get scales on the tip of your hook, even when you poke through the other side. Make sure you clean that off, you're gonna land a lot more fish. As far as the rest of the setup goes, I like a 7.6 medium light fast action rod. Plenty of backbone, soft tip, lets you load up and get into the weight of that fish before you actually set the hook. And really nice for checking those fish and giving them a little bit of a mush, a little bit of a reason to readjust and chomp back down on that minnow. A size 30 spinning reel. I actually really, really like these Fluger President, I believe they're President XTs. They got a little faster gear ratio. A lot of spinning reels out there are five to one, five, three to one. Have been for years. It's been hard to find higher speed gear ratio reels. And I can't remember offhand, but I think they're like a six, three to one. Whatever it is, it's a step up. You can pick up about three feet of line per crank. I think you're getting almost an extra foot of line every time you turn the reel. That adds up fast, especially when you're trying to pick up a lot of line. You're fishing 25, 30 feet of water, deep water, awkward angles, reeling hook sets. I'm all about it. That 7.6 medium light paired with it is just great all around rig and rod. Summertime, even if you're using whatever, leeches and crawlers and just in and out of the weeds, or the deep fall three quarter ounce weight with big four to six inch creek chubs, it works great. Eight pound mono, like I said, I do still run a fluorocarbon leader for the abrasion resistance. It's super clear and very strong. You can do an eight pound suffix advanced fluorocarbon, 10 pounds sometimes. Uh, either way, you're gonna be retying it a lot. One, if you're hooking a fish deep ever, cut that hook, don't try to peel it out. And uh, your bait just, or your line just gets dinged up. There's lots of zebra mussels and rocks and just junk in the water. When fish are eating that minnow, a lot of the times they get the whole thing in their mouth and they're basically just grinding that line, that, you know, two, three inches of line ahead of your, your knot. And so after a few fish, you gotta retie anyway. I usually start the day with about a six, seven foot leader. And if it gets down to less than, you know, three-ish feet, then I'll retie and put a new one on. And, it's also something to pay, play, pay, play, 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 pay attention to and play around with is leader lengths. I, it's no different than when you're running crankbaits, whatever, always having somebody do a different color, different size, whatever. Same thing with rigs. They're, they're super simple, but you can make them as complex as you want. Have one person in the boat run a long seven footer and have the other person run a four. As soon as that person, one, whoever it is, goes two, three fish up on you, you know you gotta adjust and do a shorter leader, longer leader. Just gotta play with it, constantly be adjusting, tweaking, just to maximize how many fish you catch. Which, speaking of which, I'm doing the deeper Lindy Rig fall chubbing thing. I never fish without seeing fish first. The nice thing is this time of year, once more, those fish kind of pull off of that weed edge and get out off of that edge of, you know, that 20 to 27 foot before it breaks off. They're so easy to grab. And I mean, you can absolutely nose hook that minnow, slowly take off at 0.3 to 0.7 down that break and S around and you'll catch fish here and there. But man, if you just spend whatever, 15, 20 minutes idling around an area, and not fishing until you see fish, you're gonna catch way more. And especially with the tail hook and trick, because that's when I wanna be dropping that bait right in the fish, right on top of the fish. Sometimes I'll almost do it like power bobbering, speed corking, where I'll just mosey around and when I graph a fish or a pot or whatever, open my bail and drop right down on them, put the boat in neutral, or hit spot lock on the trolling motor and I'll just sit there and wait until you feel the dunk. As far as locations go, you know, I might as well pick out a couple of spots on a map, but anywhere that you're graphing walleyes is a great spot to use this little trick. Now today I was catching them in basically three completely different areas. So that's why I was having it tough time telling you exactly where to go do it. Cause I slid up at 15, 16 feet of water and caught them still right on the edge of the weeds on this rig. And then out in that 24 to 27 foot, just out off of the weed edge. And I even slid out to 35 feet and there was fish there to do it uh, on kind of slow tapering breaks and caught a couple out in that deep water that I kept for dinner. And 
Then I went back up to that 23 to 27 stuff because I didn't want to kill any of the fish that I was catching, let them go. And uh, it's just so versatile, the places you can use it. But edges of giant flats, obviously I say this in almost every video, and big pieces of structure hold more fish. Drive around and scan until you start seeing fish on your side imaging. Blobs and shadows are your friend, and down imaging if it's deep enough to go right over the top of them, and then drop waypoints and fish those areas. But there's a couple of different things that I look for this time of year too, and on the edges of those big pieces of structure, they really like those kind of real sharp contours and corners. But at the same time, the opposite of that catches fish too, where I'm out on the outside on kind of a slow tapering break where it basically dumps off into some of the deepest water in the lake. So it's kind of hard to narrow down a specific spot. These are a couple that I look for this time of year. And the biggest thing is just don't fish until your electronics are telling you to. Another kind of issue with any type of deep chubbing in the fall is how long to wait before you set the hook. And it's one of those topics that there's no right answer. No matter who you ask, they're gonna tell you something different. People have got a specific number in their mind, like 10 seconds, 30 seconds, 90 seconds, like that's my whatever. I always wait that long, but it just goes based off the day and the bite. I typically start on the short side because I don't want to deep hook, gut hook fish and kill them. I'd rather miss the first couple bites, you know, and then wait longer. But man, if you're using a smaller-ish minnow, three, four inches, 10 seconds is, is usually plenty. I mean, if it's that big of a minnow, they have it, especially tail hooked. They bite the thing's head, and if you can feel that second chomp, it's game on. If you're using a bigger chub, four, five, six inches, that's when I'll wait, you know, 30 seconds or so. I'm not a big three minute guy <laughs> sitting there and waiting and waiting and waiting. And, you know, maybe it'd be different if I fish more tournaments and I had to get that fish in the boat no matter what, but if you're just out there fun fishing. I, I would say 30 seconds is kind of the top end, but just after those first couple fish, adjust from there. If you miss a fish, wait 10 seconds longer. If you uh, catch them after waiting 30 seconds and it's hooked down in its throat, set the hook after 10 seconds. So. But you know, when in doubt, I have a better hookup percentage when I hit them fast. I feel that donk. I give them like maybe 10-ish seconds, and if I can feel that kind of second thump or coax them into doing that second chomp, it's game on. I keep saying it, it's game on. It's game on. It's game on. Water temps are in the 50s. It's game on. <laughs> That's what I got for you today. The fall bite is on. Fish are chewing. You can catch them kind of any way you want to right now. That 55 to 58 degree water temp is just ridiculous. You want to pitch jigs shallow, catch them in six, seven, eight feet of water, do it. You want to run crankbaits at night, go for it. You want a creek chub, you want a jigging wrap. It's however you want to catch them right now. And I wish fall would last more than two or three days. It seems like we get a couple of decent days and then it's winter is here. So uh, you know what, bundle up, get out there, take advantage of it, sacrifice some sleep. You know where you'll find me. Thanks much for watching. If you can't get a walleye to eat a creek tail, creek tail? Cut.